Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding the users that are eligible for discount and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is easy. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called purchases with three different columns, user ID, timestamp and the amount. The combined columns user ID timestamp is the primary key for this table. Each row contains information about the purchase time and the amount paid for the user with ID user ID. So basically, if you think about it, this is the exact same question, only the ask is different from the previous lead code easy one, right? So I believe it was a lead code 2205, right? And also there we use functions so like creating a function in MySQL. Here it automatically populates to do this with a procedure, a stored procedure, right? So there is difference between a stored procedure and a function because if you remember uh, when we were writing create function, the name of the function and the parameters, and then you have to also write the return part, right? So return what kind of data type that you need to return. Uh, and here, here also you need to write, you know, if between this body that what are you trying to return as well. So you don't need to do all that in procedures, right? So there are various advantages of procedures over functions, right? The biggest one is being that you can have zero parameters in it, whereas a function should have at least one parameter. Also, you don't need to return anything. Like if you want, you can, but you don't need to return anything in a restored procedure. But in a function, you need to return something, right? There are other subtle differences as well. Let me know if you know any more difference or a major difference between a stored procedure as well as a function, right? So yeah, a user is eligible for discount if they had a purchase in the inclusive interval of time start date end date with at least minimum amount to convert the dates to times both dates should be considered as the start of the day and basically if this is the date you need to basically start of the date right so 12 am of that particular day we are asked to write a sql query to report the ids of the users that are eligible for a discount the previous one asked the number of users that are eligible for discount here it is asking the ids of the users that are eligible for discount and this should be ordered by user id in ascending order let's again go through this example same example right so if you look at it so 20 april right so outside this date date ranges right so this will be excluded then uh, user id 2 right so 19th of march it is within this range but the amount is less than minimum amount so it is also not going to be present for this user id 3 two different purchases so this part right 18th of march 12 3 uh, it's between these ranges and also the amount is greater but for user id 3 this purchase is outside of this range right so the only user id which is eligible for discount is user id 3 right and that is what we need to do okay so basically again we need to employ the same stuff so we can go ahead and start writing the query in this and just to reiterate what I said in the previous video where we had to do it by function. The reason why we are doing this by a function or a procedure is because you don't know what the start dates and end dates and the minimum amount is. Different test cases can have different values. So that is why you need to do this either by using a stored procedure or a function, right? So here we are doing this by a stored procedure. So I write from this table called purchases, right? We need to keep only those rows where your timestamp is between the start date, right? And end date, right? If the question would have said that, okay, start date, let's say, let's say it, the values were given like any user who has the start date of this end date of this. So you will be writing the specific dates here, right? But since you don't have that, so it can be anything depending upon the different test cases. So that is why we are doing this using variables. And that is why we are, you know, have to create a procedure. Okay. So once we do this, and also we need to make sure that the amount is at least greater than or equal to the minimum amount so once you have this then what do you need to do you need to basically return the users that are eligible right so we return 
distinct user id also the question says that we need to return the result ordered by user id right so we write order by user id okay so now this looks good if i run this again this is going to throw a runtime error because uh, probably we are not calling the stored procedure we are just creating it right so that is why if i go ahead and submit it it is going to pass all the test cases so this passes all the test cases this is accepted and this is how we do it again yes it is a different looking question but it is very similar or all the question is almost similar to the previous one right where we had to find the number of users that were eligible for discount there we are finding out the user ids of the users that are eligible for discount there we did that question using function here we created a stored procedure called get user ids with different parameters right and then we wrote our logic right so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video